I'm amazed at how many things there are in life and how many people there are in life who do everything in their power to make us feel like we're not smart, right? And I don't know if school made you feel smart or if school made you feel dumb, but it kind of made me feel both. It made me feel smart. Like, I'm one of those people who did well all the way through school, all the way through the third grade in school, and it went downhill from there, right? So first, like kindergarten or Head Start, actually, because I went to Head Start when I think I was four or something, or four or five. So Head Start through the third grade, I did really well in school. Fourth grade through all the rest, it was like climbing a mountain. It was, it was not fun. It was not, it was not something that gave me encouragement, self-esteem, that made me feel like I was a genius in any way, shape, or form. And I submit to you that I think we measure intelligence the wrong way most of the time. And one of the big problems that I see with what I call the miseducational, misdirectional system, aka government indoctrination camps, child prisons, schools, whatever you want to call them, is that somehow we have this idea that the more confusing a teacher is, the smarter they are. Like, how could that be possible? Like, oh, this is the best professor in the whole college. Nobody passes his class. I don't know. We might think he's the worst, right? And the reality is, it's been attributed to Einstein. However, I did a little bit of research and found out that he didn't actually say it, but I, I still like the quote, so I'm going to say it anyway. If you can't explain something to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. But I think Einstein did say, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And so what we need to do is we need to, we need to think more. It's interesting how in Genesis chapter one, God established the four levels of value. And whichever level you find yourself on is gonna determine how much money you make in life. Because whichever level you find yourself on, that's gonna determine how much value you can give to other people, right? And, and, and money or wealth or income or revenue or whatever you wanna call it, is something we receive in direct proportion to the value we deliver to other people. The problem is we think that the revenue that we receive is in proportion to the amount of value. But the revenue that we receive is not in proportion to the amount of value, but in proportion to the level of value on which we deliver that value. So I can deliver less value at a higher level and make more money than somebody who delivers more value. And by value, in the context of the sentence I'm saying right now, I mean output, like work output right? Um, I, can, I, can, I can literally do less work and make more money because I'm working at a higher level of value than somebody who works harder to deliver more. They, have more. they have more output from their energy than I do, but they're delivering value on a lower level, so therefore that lower level of value doesn't receive as much remuneration. Does that make sense? And so what we have to do is we have to figure out, we have to figure out, because there are four levels of value. So the lowest level of value is implementation. Implementation is I'm using my muscles over time to do a thing. If you understand, if you ever get your mind wrapped around this idea that wealth is spiritual and poverty is always the result of spiritual warfare, if you get your mind wrapped around that, that wealth is a spiritual outcome, if you don't like the outcome, change the input. Muscles are a physical resource. If you're an implementer, you do a thing. Muscles are a physical, imp they're a physical um, resource. Time is a limited resource. You're attempting to create wealth. Wealth is abundant. So you're attempting to create, spirit is limitless. You're attempting to create an infinite abundant outcome with a physical limited resource. It can't happen. Like you put yourself in a prison of your own choosing, by which level you decided to work on. You say, what does this have to do with thinking like a genius, talking like, th talking like third grader? You're gonna see in a minute. And so, the, if you are operating on the lowest level of value, you're gonna be making somewhere between minimum wage and $80,000 a year, depending on what you do. Depending on what you do with your time and your muscles. The next level of value is unification. The resource we use on the unification level of value is management skills. We are no longer the person who does the thing, we're the person who manages the people who do the thing. And 
if I'm, man, if I'm, if I'm operating on that level, I'm going to be making somewhere between $40,000 a year and $250,000 a year, depending on if I'm managing Taco Bell or a middle manager at Lockheed Martin. Right? So, but I'm managing. And, and what I'm still doing though is I'm, I'm managing other people who are selling their time for money. And I'm not really selling my time for money, I'm selling my skill for money. But the problem is there's a ceiling, there's a cap on my income because the company that hired me to manage these people, they're only willing to pay me what the job is worth and they're never gonna be willing to pay me what I'm worth. Are y'all tracking? And so the next level of value is where wealth begins to be created. That's in communication. The communication level of value is where wealth begins to be created. And on the low end, you can make 100 grand. On the high end, you can make hundreds of millions of dollars. Where can you make 100 grand come talking? If you're a salesperson, you sell cars. You make $100,000 a year selling cars. You make $100,000 a year selling insurance. You make $100,000 a year selling um, security systems. And what are you doing? You're having a conversation that creates cash flow. You've created a message that moves the masses to pay you some money in exchange for the value you've revealed in the words that you've spoken. Are y'all tracking? But see, here's what's really interesting. Most people learned how to, develop, how to develop their muscles for doing a task, but they never learned how to develop their mouth for communicating a message that creates cash flow. Think about it. But on the high end, and, and then you, you might be a salesperson, but then you might go high, a little bit higher level in the communication level than that. You might become an author and write a book. And you might sell a million copies. If you sell a million copies of a book and it's self-published and you sell it for $20, that's $20 million that you made from communication. Pretty cool when you think about it. And then maybe you're an A-list or B-list act, A-list actor or an A-list singer, or maybe you're Dolly Parton and you've written almost everybody's songs who ever sang a song. Right? And you're a communicator, so you write, maybe you write movies, maybe you act in a movie. You're, you're communicating for the purpose of creating revenue for yourself. And the highest level of value is imagination, and that is we use our mind and our money to make money on the imagination level. And what we do is we come up with ideas. Then we, we're good at, if, if, here's what's really interesting about the imagination level. You have to get good at the communication level on, at, like, in order for the imagination level to pay off because the ideas that you have in your head, they have to come out of your mouth so that people want to buy it and you have to be able to attract to yourself managers who can manage the people who do the thing. So the highest level of value is imagination. And it's so interesting to me that all of this is in Genesis chapter one. Uh, well, not all, all, not all of what I'm saying, but the four levels are in Genesis chapter one. So it's fascinating. Now here's what's really interesting. You can speak without thinking but you can't think without words. So words, communication is essential to imagination and imagination is essential to communication. And so that's why it's important to learn to think like a genius and talk like a third grader. It will be your best chance at improving your life financially. Learning to drive a forklift better can only give you incremental increases in your revenue. Learning how to hammer a nail faster can only give you incremental increases in your income. Learning how to drive better can only, and it doesn't matter, learning how to clean better, learning how to do an activity with your muscles over time. It doesn't even matter if you learn how to do the thing with your muscles over time exponentially better. The, the payoff for that is never gonna be exponential. But if you become incrementally better in your communication and incrementally better in your imagination, you can, it can have an exponential effect and impact on your income. Yes. What just happened? Yes. This is why it's critical to think like a genius and talk like a third grader. Because if you think like a genius and you talk, you talk like a college graduate, you're going to be very impressive, but not very impactful. And one of the purpose, purposes of communication is impact. It's, it's infinitely more important that your communication is impactful than it is that it's impressive. And the reason people want to be impressive is because they feel the need for other people to think something about them. So when you become okay in your identity and you accept 
that you are who God made you to be and you let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who what? Being in the form of God, he knew who he was, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but what happened next? Made himself of no reputation. He knew who he was, but he didn't need you to know who he was in order for him to know who he was. And see, when you, could, when you own your identity that you got from God to the degree that whether or not someone else recognizes that you can still operate in it, then and only then will you have the impact you were put here to have. Because otherwise, you're always going to be capitulating to what you think other people need you to do. So, that was the preface of the whole thing. Now I'm going to get it share with y'all. I had to lay a foundation so you could see where I'm coming from. Okay, so that wasn't it. So, what you have to do if you're going to think, and I'm, I, I took a lot of notes because I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. So if you're going to think, we're going to start out by thinking like a genius. How do you think like a genius? By the way, it's not about memorizing what somebody else told you are right ideas. Memorizing information does not, is not thinking like a genius. In fact, I submit to you that memorizing information is only a part of thinking. It's not thinking anyway. It's just a, it's a component of, memorization is a component of thinking, but memorization, memorizing information is no more thinking than a tire is a car. Okay, so (laughs) how do you think like a, a genius? First, you have to expose yourself to a lot of concepts. You have to expose yourself to a lot of concepts. The more I understand things in life, the better opportunity I'm giving myself to understand life. I have to expose myself to concepts. Now, exposing myself to concepts is a beginning. It's really interesting. It's like we talk about like wisdom has prerequisites, right? So wisdom, so there are things you have to have before you can have wisdom. Well, what's the first thing? You gotta have ignorance. Ignorance is the absence of truth. And you have to go from ignorance to knowledge. What's knowledge? Knowledge is accumulation of truth. Then we have to go from knowledge to understanding. What's understanding? The assimilation of truth. What's wisdom? Wisdom is the application of truth. And, and so if, if we're seeking to have wisdom, because I'd rather have wisdom than just intelligence. I'd rather have wisdom than just IQ. Why? Because wisdom is knowledge applied to a particular situation. And so I've got to expose myself to enough concepts. This is why... When we, when, we, when we start learning, we have, to learn, like, we have to learn what stuff is, right? Like, I'm born, I don't know my name, you know, I don't know my head from my foot, right? I don't know up from down, hot from cold, wet from dry. I don't know anything, right? And so I don't know food from dirt. I know nothing, right? And so it's, it's amazing, it's amazing how many things we learn, how much knowledge we accumulate, how much truth we accumulate in a life. It's, how, it's amazing to me, my four-year-old granddaughter, it's amazing to me how much she knows. It's like, it, it, it blows my mind. She, <laughs> yesterday she was in the kitchen and, and she said, look at my muscles, my pop. I said, oh my goodness, where'd you get that muscle? Have you been working out with your dad? Yeah, and then she goes, nee, 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 look at my muscles. That's what she calls my wife. Nee, nee, look at my muscles. And my wife said, wow, that's a big muscle. She said, and she struck a pose, and I started laughing. She walked away, and she turned around, and she looked at me. She said, <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? You're four, and you're giving me this, right? And, and so it's, it's amazing how much information, like, you have, for, you have learned, you have forgotten more things than you remember you've learned. And that's why it blows my mind when a human being looks at something and assigns a level of difficulty to it at the onset. Oh, that's too hard. I couldn't learn how to play an instrument. That's too hard. I couldn't learn a new language. That's too hard. I couldn't learn how to... What are you talking about? I can't learn how to use a computer. I can't learn how cryptocurrency. I can't learn the stock market. I can't learn real estate. What are you talking about? What does that even mean? All you have to do is look at all the stuff you've already learned in your life. That alone should let you know there's nothing you can't learn. 
Don't, buy, don't, don't keep allowing your first, second, or third grade teacher to beat you up because they told you you weren't smart. Mm -hmm, I wish I had some help in here. All my teachers, you know, my, the best teachers I ever had, you know what they did? They believed in my ability to learn. The worst teachers I ever had didn't believe in my ability to learn. And it's really fascinating to me that the miseducational system, misdirectional system, the government indoctrination camps, whatever you want to call them, child prisons. That's my favorite one because that's what it felt like to me when I was in them. <laughs> felt like, oh, I, I, I needed to get paroled. I mean, graduate. Um, so anyway, so, <laughs> so I, I remember um, it, it, it's, I, re I remember it's thinking to myself, that it's fascinating to me that the government indoctrination system says when students can't learn the way the system teaches, we blame it on the child and say the child has a learning disability. We ought to blame it on the system and say the system has a teaching disability. Oh, this person has ADD, attention deficit disorder. Do you know how ridiculous that is? You think because I ain't paying attention to you that I ain't paying attention? I'm paying attention. I'm just paying attention to something more interesting than you. And if you will be more interesting than the thing I'm paying attention to, that will cure all of my ADD, my ADHD, my ABCDEFG. What most people call ADHD, I call ECA. What's ECA? Extra creative ability. And like you're bored with minutia and monotony, and so you start creating stuff in your mind to think about because this is clearly a waste of time. And I can remember in the third grade sitting there doing addition again in the third grade, and I'm like, I already know how to do this. Why am I doing this again? This is dumb. Like, I already got this. Why am I still doing this? Why are they? I can remember in the third grade, I'm a third grader thinking, why are they wasting my time? <laughs> Some of y'all can relate to what I'm talking about. So we have to expose ourselves to concepts. And we have to intentionally expose ourselves to concepts that make us stretch. It's important for you to learn a new language. It's important for you to learn how to play an instrument. It's important for you to learn how to use a computer or learn how to edit video or learn cryptocurrency. You need to find something that you're interested in that's challenging to you so you can learn it. Why? It will make you a better person. So you expose yourself to, to concepts. The most important concepts to expose yourself to are the truths of the word of God because you have to have, you have, to have a baseline. Now, I get it. Some people are like, oh, I don't believe the Bible is the word of God. Good for you. Then let your life work out like it works out. Congratulations. You played yourself. And I'm okay with that. And maybe you think, I played myself. Cool. I'm okay with that too, right? Because I am extremely pleased with the fact that I have been exposing myself to the concepts in the Bible since I was 16 years old, and I can promise you every good thing in my life is a direct result of that. When I do things my way, sometimes they work, sometimes not so much. <laughs> but when I do things God's way, they always work. Why? My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So expose yourself to the word of God. How do you do that? By reading it. Reading it, by the way, reading it is better than not reading it. But it's not enough. Read it. Memorize scripture. I'm too old to memorize. Mary had a little, whose fleece was white as? Everywhere that Mary, the lamb was sure to. When was the last time you said that? Don't tell me you got a bad memory. You don't have a bad memory. You're just not intentionally using it. Nobody has a bad memory. Now, you may have a bad system of recall, but you don't have a bad memory. You know, people say, I'm terrible with names. The only reason you're terrible with names is because you tell yourself you're terrible with names. Nobody's terrible with names. That doesn't even make any sense. I'm terrible with names. What does that mean? I can remember what the sky is, and I can remember what grass is, but oh, your name, it's so hard, Tom. I can't remember that. It's three whole letters, right? No. The <laughs> I can't believe I'm going nowhere with this. This is not, I'm not, okay, but I am. Here, here's my point. The reason you don't remember is people, the number one reason people don't remember other people's names is because when they tell you your name, you're not listening. It's the reason. And if you are listening, 
you don't have a, con- like if you, I promise you, if every time you meet somebody and you say, what's your name? Oh, my name's Tom. Tom, that's interesting. Well, I wouldn't do that with Tom. Um, let me see, because I, I was going to say, how do you spell that? But that's clear. Okay, I'll do Stephanie, okay? Hello, my name's Myron, and your name is? Stephanie. Stephanie, Ste- Stephanie how do you spell your name? Okay, Stephanie, just like it sounds, okay. Are you named after someone? No, you're not named after someone. What does your name mean? Princess, princess Crown. So Stephanie, the princess with the crown, with the traditional spelling of her name, who's not named after anyone. Okay, got it. Now, when I have that conversation with Stephanie, not only do I remember her name, I can't forget her name. Why? Because I turned her name into an event, a conversation, and created a story around it by asking her questions about her name. If you, like, it's so simple. Like, who could do that? But if you're going to do that, here's what you have to do. You have to care. About more than the thing you want to say after you ask them your name, which you didn't care about, so you could get to the thing that you wanted to talk to them about. Am I keeping it real? Okay. So you expose yourself to concept. You can learn anything. That's my point. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like there's going to be a part two. <laughs> okay. Um, so expose yourself to new concepts. How do you do that? First of all, by discerning things. How do you discern? Reading, listening, and observing. Reading what? Well, you read the Bible, but you read books. Like there are, <laughs> we, live in a, we live in a society of children and adults' bodies. The next generation is going to live in a world of out of control maniacs. I'm, I'm not exaggerating, by the way. I'm, I'm, I intentionally use that word out of control maniacs who are offended by anything that, they, that disagrees with who they are or how they are um, and want to make everything everybody's fault but their own irresponsible selves. Why? Because they expose themselves to nothing. They, people only expose, if you only expose yourself to things that you agree with, you are living in the danger zone. The bridge is out. I don't like it when people say those words. Plunge to your doom, my friend. I, mean, I want you to think about it. It's like, you have to read stuff, like, I don't only read the stuff that I agree with. I don't only read books by people that I agree with. I read books by people I disagree with. Why? Because I might be wrong. Yeah, I said it. I might be wrong. And if I am, I want to know why. Because being wrong does not serve me and does not give me the ability to serve anybody else. But the other reason, I want to read books by people I disagree with because when I'm right, if I'm right, I want to know why I'm right. And so I don't have to be afraid because the, the, the truth never has to hide from a lie. The truth doesn't need to silence a lie. Cancel culture is stupid. It's not only stupid, though, it's also dangerous. I went to see the movie um, um, Sound of Freedom. Uh, and I've, I've been supporting... Um, O-U-R, Operation Underground Railroad, for years, right? So, but I went to see the movie Sound of Freedom. I'm like, why would anybody not want, why would anybody not want people to see this movie so they can better protect their children? Like who, like, why would, because their agenda is evil. Because they're on the side of the perps. That's why. Because they'd rather help the perps than help innocent children. That's why. Is that too real? And and, and when I... I have to... to, I'll cover that in a different video because I don't have time right now. It's just not enough time. So don't be afraid of opposing arguments. In fact... I would recommend that you argue with your own points. You need to discern. What does that mean? It means you need to read, listen, and observe. Then you need to decipher. What does that mean? You need to contemplate and then question and answer. What does contemplate mean? You need to evaluate, contemplate the things that you read, the things that you learn. You need to weigh them against truth. Notice I didn't, I didn't say weigh them against your truth. You don't have any truth. There's no, there's no your truth, my truth, his truth, her truth, their truth, they truth. No, there's just the truth, and anything that's not the truth is a lie. 
right? Now, understand there's a difference between what's truth and what's true. What's true is dynamic and can change. What's truth is static and cannot change. Truth can't, it's not that truth doesn't change, it's that truth can't change. Why? Because truth is, in Hebrew, it's amet, God's mighty covenant. If something that is truth changed, I don't have time to go into the detail to prove it to you right now. I'm sure it's on one of my videos somewhere. Go watch all of them. <laughs> right? Um, but tr- if, if truth ever changed, God would have to die. And if God dies, everything ceases to exist. Wow. So, like, weigh everything against the truth. So, once you, if, once you start reading and watching and observing, then you evaluate and you contemplate and you weigh everything against the truth. And when you do that, um, you decipher, so you discern, then you decipher by asking questions. One of my favorite quotes of all time, I got it from a friend of mine, Joe Marfolio. Here's what he said. I would much rather have questions I can't answer than answers I can't question. Ain't that good? Like, like, like if, if I really believe something, I don't have to be afraid of somebody who disagrees with me. I don't have to be offended by it. I don't have to be worried about, oh, what if they disagree? Oh, they'll be okay. Okay. So then um, we have to do. What does that mean? We have to act, experiment, and then measure feedback. So, so I dis- what I do is I discern. I'm, I'm just learning things. I'm taking in information. Here's what I, here's what I found out. I, I'm, a, I'm a really geeky person. Y'all probably haven't figured that out already. But I geek out on, like, it's easy for me to geek out on almost anything. Like, I don't really need, it doesn't have to be some, it could just be something, right? And so, like, when I first learned, I watched this video um, on YouTube by Rabbi Mordecai Kraft called Hebrew Language, the DNA of Creation. I'm like, what does that mean, right? I, I can remember, I almost, I almost had an attitude about it, right? I'm like, what does that mean? I watched that video, I'm like, I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. And I'm like, I thought I was a student of the Bible all these years. I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm, I, felt like, I felt like I was in kindergarten of the Bible when I got done watching that video. I felt like I knew nothing. So I said, I got to learn Hebrew. So I <laughs> enrolled in Hebrew University in Israel and was learning biblical Hebrew and modern Hebrew simultaneously in my 50s. Why? Because I couldn't go through another year of my life and not know the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God at that level. I had to find out, right? So, and I'm I'm telling you this for a reason. So that's something I geek out on. But I used to be, I used to be really afraid of flying, but I wouldn't say that. I say, I'm not afraid of flying, I just don't like it. It doesn't make sense. You don't see any city buses up there, do you? Planes weigh more than city buses, right? Like, that was my logic. This doesn't make sense. This is dumb. Well, I know, y'all, you see, y'all, y'all are looking at me like, who thinks like that? Me! This plane weighs a thousand times more than my car, and it's five miles in the sky going 600 miles an hour. Everything about this is wrong. And we're acting like it's normal. I'm looking around at people, they're just acting like it's normal, reading books and stuff. Y'all know we in this big piece of hunk of metal up here in the sky. Flew. This is dumb! Right? So what did I do? I took flying lessons. Why? So I could understand how it worked. And once I understood how it worked, now I can get on a plane before it takes off, fall asleep, and not wake up until it lands. Why? Because I understand how it works. It makes sense. And so, and, and the reason I'm telling you all this is not because I want you all to geek out on everything like I do, but you should, geek, you should be, like your whole life, if you live to be 972, you should geek out on, you should always be geeking out on something. You should be learning something to compare the stuff you already know with the stuff you haven't learned yet so you can better understand how life works, so you can navigate life better, so you can help those people that you came to serve navigate life better. All of that stuff put together, like be learning something. So I got my first guitar when I was in elementary school. I learned how to play some licks, but I didn't really know how to play the guitar. 
I didn't learn how to play the guitar until 1990. I took some guitar lessons, learned how to play some songs. And I really, I, I know it's going to sound weird, but I like country music. I like, but I like, I'm a, I'm a very eclectic music guy. I like country. I like jazz. I like classical. I like R&B. I like soul. I just, I like pop. I, I just like, I like, I like music as a discipline. And so I started learning about, you know, music. And then, but I got, I got to a level and then, I hadn't touched my guitar in probably, I don't know, five, six. I mean, I touch it, but not maybe pick it up for five minutes every year. I mean, like, just not, why? Because I, I can play the stuff I can play, and I can't play anything else. So it's like, eh, why bother, right? And so I'm going through YouTube, and I see this video as I'm going through YouTube, and this guy is, has an ad, and he's talking about fretboard fluency. That was the, that was the exact phrase he needed to put it in in order for me to know this is the person I want to learn guitar from. Fretboard fluency? Like you become fluent in a language, I can become fluent on the fretboard. I can understand the fretboard of my guitar, like make my guitar talk? Oh, come to Papa. I'm like, okay. So I, sent, I texted it to myself because I didn't want to lose it. I went back and watched his intro video. I said, everything he says makes sense. He says, we have a system where if you're an intermediate guitar player, in three to six months, we can teach you, you can play anything you hear. Bro, do not threaten me with a good time. You got me confused with somebody else, right? And now at this point, once I watch the sales video, now I'm at the point, I don't care how much it costs. I'm buy- I already know I'm buying it, right? So, so they want me to schedule a call with one of our consultants, which means get on the phone with somebody who's going to sell you their course. <laughs> but that person don't know how easy they about to have it because I already know I want it. And if I want it, you can't talk me out of it. And if I don't want it, you can't talk me into it. So I was like, okay, okay, like, okay, well, make sure. And then they're like, make sure you, your guitar's in tune and make sure you, you know how to, you're ready to play some stuff for us to show us where you are. I'm like, you had me at hello, bro. Like I got my little guitar tuning app, made sure my guitar was tuned. I'm, I'm like, okay, my call's coming up. I'm ready to buy this thing. I don't know if it's going to be 20,000, 60,000. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't care, but I don't care. Like, you don't understand at the level at which I don't care. Why? Because this is something I want to add. The better you understand music, the better you understand life. The better you understand science, the better you understand life. The better you understand language, the better you understand life. The better you understand, like, aerodynamics, the better you understand life. The better you understand golf, the better you understand life. I couldn't leave that one out. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so, so I get on the call, and they show me the thing, and I'm like, okay, I'm in. Like, I'm in. They said, well, it's, it's $8,800 if you do the payment plan or it's $7,800 if you do the one-time payment. I'll do the one-time payment. You take American Express. Yep. Here, take it. Right? So I'm like, okay, I'm ready. So I dive in. And it's a video explaining the course and another video explaining the course, another video explaining the course. And I'm like, I'm like, I am going to watch all of the foundational videos. And I promise you, I'm not exaggerating. There are at least 12 videos before I touched my guitar explaining the concepts. I'm like, I want to touch my guitar. I want I want to get started, right? And then I got started, and then it was just, okay, we're going to do some right-hand techniques. So I practiced my right-hand technique. That's all I did. It, it's simple stuff that I already know how to do, but I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I was no longer fluent at it because I hadn't touched my guitar in years. So now I'm just doing, 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 and just boom, 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 walking the strings, walking up and down the strings. Okay, cool. Did that for a couple days. Next day, they showed me. Six string, I never even heard of this before. The six string form front facing. I'm like, I don't have any idea what that means, but I'm going to do it. And so they showed me how the scale works with six string form, the, 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 the uh, major scale, six string, fourth. I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I practiced that thing for hours yesterday. My pinky is so sore. Guess what I'm going to do today? I'm going to practice for more hours a day. I'm going to practice it until I can do it up and down the neck. Until I'm going to get, I'm going to, like, I don't care about playing a song. I'm just going to be able to, it's going to be like a machine gun. These fingers are going to be, right? My point is, the reason I did that is because I want to expose myself to more concepts. Because one of these days, I'm going to be looking at a business problem. And I'm going to see a solution in the major scale. Because everything's connected to everything else. And so, um, so every time I do something, you want to, 
you want to decipher, I mean, you want to discern, you want to expose yourself to things. Then you want to decipher the things you've exposed yourself to, to see what you want to keep and what you want to throw away. And then you want to go do something with it to see what happens when you act on it. I love what, I love what King Solomon said in, in, in Proverbs chapter 1. He said one of the reasons he wrote the book of Proverbs is so those who read it could receive instruction of wisdom. Receive instruction of wisdom. What does that mean? That means so we can learn the lessons you can only learn while you're doing the thing. You cannot teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar. You can read all the books on swimming you want to, and if you jump in the pool without any practice, you are going to drown. Why? Because you have to iterate. You have to do something. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Most people will expose themselves to the business arena, right? They'll go out and discern, oh, business seems like a better way to make money than just having a job. I'll try that. And then what they do is they decipher all the stuff they learn in business. Like, this is a lot of stuff. I'm overwhelmed. But the reason you're overwhelmed is because you didn't master one component at a time and then master the next component, and then master the next component, and then master the next component, and then stack one mastery on top of another mastery on top of another mastery. What you did was you learned about something and thought you learned it. And so you got this blurry idea of what it might be, and then you learned about something else, and you thought you had learned it, and then you stacked that lack of clarity on top of the first lack of clarity. Then you learned another new thing about another new thing and thought you learned it, and then you stacked that lack of clarity on top of the first former two lacks of clarity, then you learned another lack of clarity, and now you're using all of this mental and physical and uh, psychological bandwidth to try to hold this mumbled, jumbled mess together, and you're exhausted mentally every time you think about business because you haven't mastered one concept yet. And what, you, what, what would work better for you is if you master one concept, let me give you the definition of mastery. Mastery is the ability to execute effortlessly without the use of conscious resources. When I can do something effortlessly without thinking about it, I've mastered it. Until I can do it effortlessly without thinking about it, I've not. So when I learn a business concept and master it, I can execute it effortlessly without the use of conscious resources. Here's the problem. People will stack a lack of clarity on top of 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 a lack of clarity, and here's what they do. They go out and try to iterate, and it doesn't work, doesn't work and they think they failed. So I'm going to end with this. Don't mistake feedback for failure. Far too many people think they failed when actually all they did was quit before they figured it out. I hope this blesses you, and I'll see you on the next part, part two of Think Like a Genius, Talk Like a Third Grader, and maybe we'll get to the Talk Like a Third Grader part. Stay blessed by the best. Peace out, Cub Scouts.